Good morning everyone. On a very um, wet Wednesday morning, it's one of those days whenever you're glad you don't have to go out and about maybe and stay inside in the warmth of the house. Well as you stay inside in the warmth of the house, let's read the rest of Proverbs chapter 24 together. So we're going to start at verse 23 and read to the end. Here's God's word. Here are some further sayings of the wise. It is wrong to show favouritism when passing judgment. A judge who says to the wicked, you are innocent, will be cursed by many people and denounced by the nations. But it will go well for those who convict the guilty. Rich blessings will be showered on them. An honest answer is like a kiss of friendship. Do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house. Don't testify against your neighbours without cause. Don't lie about them. And don't say, now I can pay them back for what they have done to me. I'll get even with them. I walk by the field of a lazy person, the vineyard of one with no common sense. I saw that it was overgrown with nettles, it was covered with weeds, and its walls were broken down. Then, as I looked and thought about it, I learnt this lesson. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit, Scarcity will rob you like an armed attacker, armed robber. Amen. And that is the end of Proverbs chapter 24. At the start of it, it talks about um, a judge showing favouritism and who will be cursed by the people if somebody who is guilty is found innocent. But you'll be praised if you convict the guilty. Who would want to be that judge? Who would want to have that responsibility? Um, in life we are told not to judge one another because we will get it wrong because whenever we judge others there's things in our lives which are not right as well and the only true judge is God and Solomon even you know who was very wise uh, saw the dangers in having to pass judgment on one another so isn't it great that we don't have to isn't it great that we're not the ones who decides who is good enough or worthy enough? Because none of us are. But rather that it is God that does that. But at the end of that as well, there's this um, warning against laziness. And it talks about how he walked past the field of a lazy person. And it said he learnt this lesson. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little, a little folding of the hands then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Maybe you wonder, well, what's the point of that for me? Um, I'm not somebody who goes out and works. Maybe you're retired, or maybe you do work, but that's not the sort of work that you do, where you need to be up and about doing things again. And you wonder, how can I apply that to me? Well, one way we can apply this is actually in our daily walk with God. It's easy to get lazy in it, isn't it? It's easy to say, I'll do my readings later. Or it's easy to say, um, I'll, I'll sit down and I'll, I'll, I'll do my prayers later on. Or I'll think about that. Or I'll, church is online, so you know what? I'm not going to get up at 11 o'clock and watch it. I'll watch it later on in the day. It's easy to say that, but then we don't do it. Other things creep in. Or maybe we just feel tired and I could just put my head down for tonight. It will not matter for today. And it's easy for us in our walk with God to get lazy and as we get lazy then we lose the habit as we talk about of reading our bible of praying of, of coming to church and then that damages our walk with god our relationship with god we don't have the firmness that we want to have we don't have that security um, and we start to wobble in our faith because god wants us to have a strong faith that's what we're going to be looking at tonight in our bible study um, all about faith. So Solomon's warning here, we can take it in our personal walk with God. Don't be lazy. Don't put it off till later. But set a routine, set a pattern whenever we are spending time reading God's word, praying, coming to church, albeit online, watching our service, doing whatever it is that we do um, to increase and enrich our relationship with God. You know, maybe that's a little bit of a challenge on this wet and miserable day because it'd be easy as I look out 
the window down in the church car park. It'd be easy just to say, it's not a nice day, I'll just put my head down again, pull the duvet cover over and maybe just do as little as possible today. But there's a challenge that we keep our routine with God, we keep that time with him to keep the strength in our relationship. Trust that that would encourage us and challenge us all this morning. Great to see um, those folks who are watching on live at the minute as we're doing this. And I know all our folks will watch us later on. Good morning to you all and uh, have a good day and please stay safe. But let's join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Even though it's bucketing with rain outside, we thank you again for your goodness to us. Lord, this rain waters our ground. It gives us water for our reservoirs, water which we use every day as we cook, as we drink it, as we shower in it. Lord, just how you provide for us. Um, Lord, you're a great God and we thank you for that. Help us each day, Father, just to take that time with you. Help us not to become lazy in our relationship with you, but to keep the, the desire, the will to, to want to spend time with you so that we can grow stronger in our faith of you, grow stronger in our knowledge of you, and just walk more with you each and every day. So Lord, on this wet and miserable day, just encourage us, be close to us, we pray. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Um, and as I, said, as I said, take care. God bless. I'd see you again tomorrow morning at this time. But if you would like to join with us tonight for the Bible study at 7.30, it's going to be live streamed this week. Please come along and join. Um, there is a prayer time afterwards on Zoom. If you'd like details of the Zoom, um, send me a little message um, or text or, or a direct message um, through Messenger and I will send you the details of that or give Barbara in the office a call and she has details of it as well. But in the meantime, take care. God bless. Bye.